Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and this is your something's going on here. I'm gonna find out what it is. Photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. As you should know by now, I've been using Squarespace for jaredpoland.com for well over 10 years. 10 years. The reason I've been using Squarespace for my own portfolio for that long is it's just so damn simple to use. It's simply drag and drop and go, no coding needed. In fact, it took me less than five minutes to put up this new gallery of my poison photos from Philly. To get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash Frono's photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code Frono's photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, did you see the photos NASA released? I did, and the first thing I thought wasn't. Damn! It was actually that these look a little flat and can use some Skittles. Bam! Now, before you yell at me and say that you're not supposed to edit scientific images, I already did and they look better, in my, in my opinion. How dare you? Anyway, these images were captured with the James Webb Telescope, which cost $10 billion to make. It has a primary mirror of 21.3 feet across versus the Hubble's puny, almost eight foot across. The web is made up of 18 gold-plated hexagonal segments that when aligned perfectly, you get this. No, Dan, not NASA's edits, show mine. How dare you? Seriously, that's insane. The light from this image traveled some 13.5 billion years to get here. Yes, that means what we're seeing happened 13 and a half billion years ago. I know, it's hard to wrap your head around it. Every single speck of light in these images is another sun, another cluster of galaxies, another place where there just might be some planets and might be some life. I want proof of life. It's, it's just insane. Anyway, I made a standalone video discussing the James Webb Telescope, as well as these images, and you can check that out after Fix, but not now. After Fix, damn it. Next up, Nikon Rumors posted a non-rumor that I thought was important to share with you guys. A photographer by the name of Darius Bress did a quick test showing you the focus speed difference between the Z6 II and the Z9 with an adapted Nikon 302.8 VR version two lens, and the results are, well, exactly what I've been saying for years. In the quick video clip, you can see plain as day how slow the Z6 II is compared to the Z9. But Jared, the Z9 is so much more expensive. No shit. The point is that before the Z9 came out, I always said that the focus with adapted lenses at that 3514 just wasn't as accurate. It wasn't as sharp when I adapted it here. Just felt off and slow, and people called me a Nikon hater. How dare you? Here's what Darius had to say. It looks like the lens attached by the F to Z2 on the Nikon Z9 are at full speed. The difference is quite significant. I also checked the Z7 II and it performs the same as the Z6 II. Where does such a difference in engine operation come from? The Z9 has a faster matrix and processor. I think that's the reason. Does it matter in practice, in fast action? Yes. I knew it all along. Because even when the lens loses the object, it can return quickly. Yep. Go ahead, tell me once again how firmware will fix your precious Z6 and Z7 twos. F you, fanboy. It never will because it's about the processing power. Next up, Canon has announced two new affordable lenses for the RF mount. They are the RF24 1.8 macro IS and the RF15 to 35 f 4.5 to 6.3 IS. Since the introduction of the RF system, Canon has spent a lot of time focusing on high-end pro glass and has slowly seeded out more affordable RF options. Now that they have two crop sensor cameras in the way of the R10 and R7, they needed more affordable RF options, and that's what they just gave us today. Today. The 24 1.8 IS is a full frame lens, but on a crop sensor body, it will give you a 35 millimeter equivalent of 38.4 millimeters. Here at the factory, we can finally replace our 24 1.4 EF on our scripted set with this new 24 1.8 RF. Now, a fixed 24 has personally never been a lens that I would invest in for full frame, but for crop sensors, it will be pretty good. I could go into how many lens elements this lens does have and talk about the motors and other meaningless stuff, but the truth is, who cares? Go shoot photos. No one's looking at your images and going, oh, I care how many elements this has. 
they don't care about the minutia. I'm very into the minutia. It's a good word, minutia. The 24 1.8 will set you back $599 and should be here in late August. The 15 to 35 will be a solid kit lens for a crop sensor camera, giving you the 35 millimeter equivalent of a 24 to 56 millimeter lens. Or if you really need something cheap for a full frame body, I guess this will get the job done. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. If you're looking to be a photographer, professional or not, and want better results, these Vari Aperture lenses are not the way to go. Sure, you can get solid images, but I'm a 2.8 or better guy. Once you go better glass, you never want to go back. You're going to be much happier with your results with glass, 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 glass. And on the flip side, if you just want to take pictures in auto, this lens is perfect for you. What's that? What's that? What's that sound? Oh, that's right. That's the Canon money truck backing away. Goodbye, money truck. Bye. Anyway, if you still think the 15 to 35 is for you, it will set you back $549.99 and be here in late August. And finally, in what seems like forever since we've heard from Sony Alpha rumors, they have a new rumor just for us. They are claiming we will see the Sony a7R5 sometime around October, and it might, let me repeat, might. So you're telling me there's a chance. Use a new 90 plus megapixel sensor. Now, they do go on to say that they have no reliable specs. I mean, do they ever really have reliable specs? And that the large megapixel info is considered a wild rumor. Now, if I had to guess, Sony was going to announce the A7R5 over a year ago at this point. But due to the chip shortages, they opted to hold off on announcing pretty much anything new, including most lenses and other bodies. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. What's a limb? And say that the A7R5 might keep the same sensor as the R4, just with some minor tweaks, though if Sony didn't change the sensor, what would be the point of buying basically the same camera as the generation before? Now, what do you think the A7R5 will have, and when do you think we will have it? Soon. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared, Photo.com. See ya.